Look at us out in public. You know what I'm saying? Like, make some noise for us doing shit, man. Yeah. That's big. I love seeing this shit. Things are kind of creeping back. You got the signs of things creeping back. Like, I'm up in LA. Like, we got, I was at, like, you know, concerts are, you know, packed again. You got people packing stadiums and shit like that. I don't know if you guys saw the news last month, but there was three mass shootings. Um, and I don't know how you guys read that news, but I was like, we're fucking back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Like, dude, that's the country I fucking remember. You know what I'm saying, dude? Three of those things, dude. We got a couple weeks left in this month. Let's get those numbers up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot of good metrics on that. First of all, that means that people are going out in mass. They're shopping again. That's good. Also, ammunition is not cheap, and we can afford that. So, <laughs> Joey B's doing something right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anybody have a favorite mass shooting? It's a tough question, I get it. There's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to choose, I get it. I, I, my favorite was the one where the dude rolled up on the congressional softball game, um, ended up shooting at all of them. He ended up just killing himself. Um, but the headline the next day read, crazed liberal shoots up congressional softball game. Um, and then if you kept reading the article, you saw he ended up shooting 29 rounds, didn't kill anybody, ended up just killing himself, right? And I just thought the headline was kind of redundant, maybe a little amusing. It was like, my man shot 29 rounds and didn't kill anybody. Like. Of course it was a fucking liberal. <laughs> like a conservative was getting four bodies on that easy. You know what I mean? Like, use the scope. It's there for a reason. We've all played video games. Grow up. What's going on with me? I'm out here. I'm 35, just turned 35. Yeah, that's the response it deserves. <laughs> grown man in sweatpants. I've given up at this point. <laughs> I am finding myself just getting pissed at the younger generation just way easier. Just finding shit to just be pissed about. Like recently, I found myself pissed about the whole weed. We got weed heads out there. Woo! There you go. I heard the delayed laughter earlier. <laughs> you were like, I guess a scope would improve accuracy. <laughs> I, uh, but I was, I'm pissed at them about the weed. Because these young motherfuckers now, they can get so high so easily. You know what I'm saying? So fucking easily. Like, I've been smoking since I was 15 years old. It was not that easy back then, okay? You can just pop an edible. You're as high as you've ever been in an hour, right? Like, back when I started smoking weed, I had to spend an hour just getting the seeds out of the swag weed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you remember Reggie Blunts? Like, that was a pandemic of its own, Reggie Blunts, dude. That set my generation back. We still got a headache, okay? <laughs> Like, it just pissed me off, because like, back when I started smoking weed at 15, if I wanted to get super high, I had to convince a friend of mine to twist a blunt up, light that blunt, flip that lit blunt inside of his mouth, and then we were gonna go like lip to lip, pretty much, and he was gonna <laughs> blow smoke in my face. And that was some of the gayest shit I was doing back then, okay? And this was during the Bush administration, you know what I'm saying? Like, you weren't just doing that. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still hitting on MSNBC. <laughs> And you know what he was gonna do after he shotgunned that blood in my face? He was gonna freestyle rap for about 15 minutes. <laughs> over some G unit beats and a silver Mercury Sable that he was borrowing from his mom. And 10 minutes in, you were listening to him, and you're like, dude, this guy's kinda got bars. Like, <laughs> if he just put the weed down and focused on this, he could be somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's Brian, that's your weed dealer now. <laughs> These motherfuckers don't know nothing about the interpersonal relationship I had to build with Brian. <laughs> Through a Nokia phone. <laughs> Just different shit. But I, uh, so I moved to Los Angeles, California to pursue my dreams and passions in January of 2020. <laughs> yeah, tough, tough timing. But I, uh, but it's been interesting being out there and shit like that. Like I'm trying to just, you know, be more aware of shit. Like, cause I moved from Arizona to LA. So just different, you know, ideologies, different shit. I gotta, a lot of woke motherfuckers out there, you know what I mean? But I've been, I've been opening my eyes up to different shit. Like, I was out there for a lot of things, seeing some stuff. Like, I was out there for the whole Black Lives Matter movement and shit like that. Um, you know, I went out into the protest myself. I was new to town. I thought it'd be a good way to meet people. <laughs> Rub some elbows, kiss some babies, you know what I mean? But what I do, I walked out of there with a black girlfriend. What's up? You know what I'm saying? A lot of you motherfuckers went home and put a black square on your Instagram. I go home, I go down on a black box, okay? <laughs> Talking to talk, walking the walk, all right? Man in the mirror, it's a Michael Jackson song that my girlfriend told me about. You guys should look that one up. It's time to make a change. But 
But I was out there for that. I was out there for the whole election cycle. That shit was crazy. That was fucking nuts. These last couple elections just been pissing me off. They're just fucking, you know, just horrible options. Because I remember, you know, I've been voting since 2004. I just remember when it was just easy decisions. You know what I mean? Because I vote like a lot of us vote. Like, I vote for the person who, first of all, has symmetrical facial features. <laughs> That's big. That's why Ted Cruz is never going to win. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's got HD at the crib, but his nose is going left or right on my 55-inch TCL. <laughs> and then I vote for the person that I want to drink a beer with or smoke a blunt with, right? Like, you just vote for the person you want to kick with at a party. You know what I mean? But back in 04, that's easy as fuck. That's George W. Bush every fucking time. That's the fucking homie, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you can plan 9-11, you can probably plan a party, okay? <laughs> Also, he's bringing the six pack you're drinking from, you're twisting the blunt up in the back, he's leaning in like, you're put cocaine in that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lil' Prima? I'm like a shotgun it for you, they call me Leather Tongue. <laughs> 08 comes around, the 08 election, that's the easiest shit. Obama's the homie, you know what I'm saying? That dude's cool as fuck. He got big ass ears, but they're symmetrical, all right? <laughs> And you know what he does at parties? He walks into every room with his wife looking like he just fucked her. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. You want a dude that looks like he just laid it down in the room prior, okay? <laughs> also, he's walking into every big meeting with post-nut clarity. <laughs> you, know what I'm you want your world leader walking into international meetings with a loaded gun? No, you want to clear that out, all right? <laughs> And then think about it from the flip side. Who'd he beat, right? He beat John McCain. And, uh, you know, I'm from Arizona. I fuck with John McCain heavy, but let's be real. He couldn't raise his arms above his shoulders. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, if you can't raise the roof, you're not gonna raise my taxes. <laughs> and then he beat Mitt Romney, and that's just a full-grown man named after a baseball glove. And, uh, <laughs> it's a hard pass for me. And I don't know if you know a lot about his religious beliefs, but he's wearing full body underwears under that suit. Uh, I just need boxer briefs, you know what I'm saying? I just need <laughs> then 2016 comes around, that election, it's like, what the fuck are these options? You know what I'm saying? Like on one side, sure, Trump at a party, like he sounds cool, he knows Kanye West, he fucked a porn star, he's talking about something called Space Force, right? But then you bring the hard drugs out and he's like, actually, I'm stone cold sober. It's like, dude, nobody trusts that, okay? <laughs> And then Hillary at the party, she's turning the music down all damn night, right? And it's like, look, bitch, we only invited you because your husband's cool, okay? I'm like, we don't fuck with you like that. But I did, I did side with her on that election because I just like the idea that Slick Will was gonna be back up in the crib. Oh, Billy Boy back up in the spot, popping his head out, like, what's good, bitches? I'm back. How y'all doing? Yeah, they got me in the same room as last time. I don't know how it worked out either, same room. Are you still here, girl? You got thick, what's up, okay? But it didn't work out that way. Right? right went the other way. And, uh, you know, it was a funky little four-year stretch, for sure. But I think we could all admit, like, during that four-year stretch, we all knew that he was the best working comedian. <laughs> I'm saying, like, that motherfucker was funny as shit. Like, he was working on a Netflix special. It just happened to be on C-SPAN, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we all watched the news during that four years and thought to ourselves, you know what, sometimes Mexicans do be doing that, you know? <laughs> And then 2020 comes around, and it's like, what the fuck are these options? The 2020 election was fucking crazy. That, on one side, you got this burnt orange motherfucker looking like King Louis from the Jungle Book still, right? <laughs> and on the other side, you got a dude who looks like he chose the wrong cup in Indiana Jones. <laughs> you chose poorly. <laughs> I'm just saying, we just voted between two 80-year-old motherfuckers last year, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's some crazy ass shit, dude. We all got 80-year-old motherfuckers in our family. We're just happy when the applesauce doesn't dribble, dribble out of their mouth on Thanksgiving dinner, you know what I'm saying? Like, go ask an 80-year-old motherfucker what their five-year plan is. You know what it is? Life. <laughs> We're like, hey, why don't you try to run the country while you try to make it to 83? Did you say something about dementia? I will figure it out. <laughs> I'm just saying, we went four years with a dude where every single sentence he said, you were like, dude, I might die. Like, this dude could kill me. And now we got a dude where every single sentence he says, you're like, dude, he could fucking die. <laughs> like, this could kill him. Like, you got this sentence, big dog? <laughs> Is somebody putting extra commas in the teleprompter right now? <laughs> I'm just saying, we're a broken hip away from some shit going down in this country. And maybe that's why we're on life support. But you guys, Michael Turner's my name. I appreciate you guys. Keep it going, baby.